If you are a Lightroom user, we got an early Christmas present from Adobe this week. So um, notice I said Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. So I, I personally switched over from Classic to Lightroom uh, probably about a year and a half ago when the, it first came out in a, in a beta that I was using when they added the local browsing option. For me personally, I just found it an easier way to look at photos. I never liked the, the classic catalog and the editing settings are the same. So I really didn't lose anything for, for my workflow. Um, I'll put a link down, down below too as well if you want to find out more about that. But um, I started sharing that workflow and what I found is some people still wanted to be on Lightroom Classic. Totally fine. It's it, it, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but some people did like the simplicity of the Lightroom workflow, but it was missing a couple of features, mainly in the external editing uh, space. Uh, one of those features was editing in an external plugin. And that feature got added into Lightroom back in, I think it was October, 2024. So that feature is there, but some of the other ones were some of the ways we would go over into Photoshop. Now edit in Photoshop was always, was always there. So we've been able to do that, but a couple of the other features as well as uh, some things like smart objects and opening multiple layers, we're not. Well, that's what we got added this week. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. Now I am in Lightroom's local mode, which means I can just click on a folder and browse to any photo um, and then just go in and edit that photo. Uh, but the, what I'm about to show you here also works in the cloud mode. So if you've got photos in the cloud or in any albums inside of Lightroom, uh, same thing will also work. So let's go ahead and hide that panel. So you can go through, do any edit settings. When you're ready to move to Photoshop, for example, let's say in this case, maybe I wanna do a sky replacement. So I'll just go edit in Photoshop and go down here, open as smart object. So that's gonna take us over into Photoshop and some people like smart objects. I, I'm not particularly one of them, but some people like to be able to apply filters non-destructively and do various things. Um, in our case, I'm gonna to go to edit. We'll go down here to sky replacement and I'll just choose one of the one of the default basics guys here just to do something Photoshop like. Again, if, if you don't like sky replacement, then just insert whatever Photoshop tool that you want here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and just uh, maybe make that sky a little bit brighter to fit the photo a little bit better. Maybe warm it up a little bit, click okay. So now we've got our sky replacement layers down here. Now at this point, you may be somebody that wants to run a filter on it. Again, you wanna run that filter non-destructively. So if you added any filters here, uh, because it's a smart object, they would get listed as smart filters. Another option that you have is, let's say I look at the bottom photo, the original, our original photo here. To me, it looks a little cool. I don't wanna go all the way back to Lightroom to make the adjustment because I might wanna tweak the adjustment based on the sky. I wanna tweak the essentially my original photo and the sky while I'm here inside of Photoshop since I have them on separate layers. So I can double click that layer. That will open me up into Camera Raw, which at this point now I can go to color and I can maybe warm that up a little bit, click okay. And now I've adjusted that layer. Got it and adjust the sky because the sky is on a separate layer. So that's the advantage of Photoshop is you can break everything up into layers. So this is one of the cases where if you did use smart objects, you might wanna be able to go back and forth just by double clicking on it, accessing camera raw, accessing some of these raw settings without necessarily restarting your image and going back to Lightroom, starting over again, or going back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop here. Uh, one thing to note, a lot of people I find a lot of misunderstanding around this too. This is a smart object, okay? This is different because it came from Lightroom. This is different. When you double click on it, it's, it's going to open up into Camera Raw. If I were to go take just a regular layer here, like the sky layer, if I were to go to the layer menu, and go inside of here and convert this over into a smart object, okay? So I've essentially made that layer a smart object. Just know if I double click this, it's gonna open up a new document to edit that photo as a smart object. It, it doesn't work the same, okay? A lot of people think you can convert any layer to smart object that instantly makes it a raw photo and I can go into camera raw and that doesn't work that way. So I just always find a little bit of misunderstanding around that. Okay, so now we've gone in there, we've edited our smart object. Now we can go file, save. All right, big, pretty important step inside of, of working in this version of Lightroom is to remember that that doesn't complete it. You actually have to close it while you're in Photoshop. 
Okay, so you don't just you don't just want to do file save. You want to make sure you actually come in there and close the image. Then when you hop back over here into Lightroom, now you'll see that I'm going to have essentially two versions of my photo, which is the same as it always worked in Lightroom Classic as well. So I've got my original raw photo, and then I've got that edited photo, which is the Photoshop file, which at this point I could always go back and I could edit, re-edit that in Photoshop and have access to all my layers, or I could open it up into uh, the raw edit settings here and I can do micro adjustments to the photo. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that to the photo after you get back into Lightroom, especially as you've combined multiple layers in there. Uh, you can get in there and add and adjust any settings you want. Again, I'm probably not going to do big major exposure highlight and shadow adjustments here because that's going to be better suited for the raw photo. Um, but if I did have micro adjustments to the lighting or the color um, or just some creative styles that I wanted to add to it, I'd have no problem doing that on the photo once I got back over here to Lightroom. Well, it's Christmas time and my wife and kids want expensive presents, so you're getting a quick word from our sponsor. If you are at all interested in this Lightroom workflow, not Lightroom Classic, uh, but maybe evolving into this workflow, I have a course called Evolving with Lightroom. Um, and I can break it down very simple. Lightroom is, it's taking a photo browser like Adobe Bridge. You just browse to a folder of photos. No import, no catalog. Use it on any computer you want. You don't have to sync or have multiple catalogs or whatnot. You just browse to a folder of photos. That's it. Just look at them. Um, and then I always wish Bridge had a little edit panel in it. And that's Adobe Camera Raw. But again, it's clunky to jump between the two. That's what Lightroom is. Once they added the local setting over a year ago, we can browse to local folders. We can use this on any computer we want. We can browse to folders. And then we have all of our edit controls, the same edit controls in Camera Raw, the same edit controls in Lightroom Classic are inside of there. So it's just a simpler workflow for people like myself that don't necessarily want all of what Lightroom Classic has to offer and some of the complexity uh, that comes along with it. So I encourage you to swing by the website. Uh, it'll tell you all about the course, give you a little sample of the workflow on there. It's very affordable. It's uh, on sale right now, it's a very approachable course, easy to watch. So if you wanna find out more, uh, just check the link below. All right, let's take a look at the other uh, file open in Photoshop option that we have here. We'll go to a different folder and take a look here. Let's go, let's just go search by a couple photos there. There we go. So I've got a couple photos here that I took uh, one morning. Again, I'll hide the left-hand side, give myself a little bit more room there. So I've got a couple photos that I took one morning um, where the, the moon, a full moon was, was, uh, was setting over the mountains here. And you can see because of exposure, there, there's no way to capture this photo in one shot. Okay, it's, just, it's, it's, it's essentially impossible because of how bright the moon is. So what I did is I had my camera on a tripod, I took two photos. I'm gonna go and edit the first photo just to make it a little bit brighter here. That looks pretty good. Pull back a little bit on the highlights. I don't want, the, I want too much flare to start to appear around the moon, which is gonna happen regardless, but I'll go in here and just make that a little bit brighter, boost the whites just a bit, pull back on the blacks right about there, okay? So problem is, is obviously our moon's too bright. HDR, nothing, that's not the way to go for this. You're gonna have to do some type of an exposure blend. So if I uh, press G for grid, I can see that there's my uh, original file that I was working on. Right next to it is a file where the moon looks better, okay? But obviously the foreground's too dark. If I were to try to increase that exposure, it's obviously gonna get very, very noisy. It's not gonna look right. So this is a case for Photoshop to do an exposure blend. So what you do is click on one photo, shift click on the other one. I went through the file menu last time. You can also right click. You can choose edit in Photoshop, open as layers in Photoshop. And what that's gonna do is gonna take both of those photos and it's gonna stack them on top of each other inside of Photoshop as layers. All right, so you can see we've got that one. I'm gonna drag, I always prefer whatever, whatever the bigger photo is, the more of the photo surface area I'm gonna use. For my personal reasons, I always prefer at the bottom, but with masks, it doesn't really matter, so. And then what we'll do here is, let's go grab my elliptical marquee tool, hold down the shift key, make a selection, like so. I'm using the space bar to finesse it and get it into place. So now I've got a, a selection around the moon. 
I'm going to go on that layer and I'm just going to add a layer mask to it. So you can go to the bottom of the layer panel to do it. You've got your contextual taskbar here. You can click the layer mask icon. The way it works is whatever selected stays, whatever wasn't selected goes away. All right, essentially gets hidden by the layer mask. So now I'm able to see uh, essentially the best of both worlds here. Now, little Photoshop tweak for something like this, because you'll never, especially the way that you have to shoot this, the moon is always going to be slightly have a uh, have a little bit of flare on the edge of it because when you're exposing um, it's just you know you're exposing it long enough for this foreground that that moon will typically have a little flare so what I do we'll go back to our layer mask turn that layer on uh, I command or control click on it that puts the selection back on the moon then I go back to the layer all right, click on the layer thumbnail, not the mask thumbnail, and just press Command or Control J, and that will pop it up onto its own layer. And then I'll just free transform it. Just make it just a hair bigger than it was. I don't wanna make it too much bigger, just enough to take care of the edge that we saw around there. And then just like before, when you're done, you just go File, go down there to Save. Uh, it's gonna save, again, a copy of the file. It's got to, it's gonna save a layered copy of the file. And then when it's done, as I mentioned before, the one little kind of nuance here you got to make sure you do is the workflow is not complete until you close the image. So you've got to close it. And then when you flip back over into Lightroom, uh, eventually what we're going to see here is I've got my two photos that I went in there with. And now you can see there is one of the original photos, there's the other original photo, and then there is the layered photo that we just worked on inside of Photoshop, which again, I can always come in here and do some micro adjustments inside of the edit settings. So hopefully that helps those of you that were looking for some more uh, Photoshop edit in features and uh, helps complete uh, some of the things you might've been missing from Lightroom Classic. Also another great video to go watch next. I've got five features in Lightroom. Again, this version of Lightroom that we've been talking about in this video here. I've got five features that you're going to want to know about. If you didn't know about these features, you're probably not getting uh, the most out of this version of Lightroom. So if you're looking for something to go watch next, that's a great place to go.